is uh, State of Georgia versus Africa Conley. Uh, there at the jail, if you all can get Miss Conley on. Yes, sir. She's going up. Okay. She's a Yeah, you're going to All mark. right. And if you are uh, Africa Conley, just wave at me to confirm. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, Ms. Conley, you are charged with uh, felony murder. Uh, that is case number 2023-WA15490 and also charged with discharge of a firearm uh, near highway. That is charge. Uh, I'm sorry, that is um uh, Case number 2023-WA15491, uh, representing the state is Ms. Freeman, and representing Ms. Conley is Mr. Richardson. And Ms. Freeman, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Your Honor. Detective Welch, would you raise your right hand, please? We swear and affirm that the testimony about to provide in the matter of State of Georgia versus Africa Conley will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. Thank you. Please tell us your name and how you're employed. Uh, Joanne Welch, uh, detective at Riverdale Police. How long have you worked with the Riverdale Police Department? Uh, close to a year. And ma'am, were you working in another law enforcement capacity prior to joining the Riverdale Police Department? Yes, ma'am. And where was that? Uh, Fulton County District Attorney's Office. In what capacity did you work with the Fulton County District Attorney's Office? Investigator. How long were you with that office? Uh, Close to two years. And is that the um, all of your law enforcement experience? No, ma'am. I actually have 32 years experience. Uh, okay. I've been nonstop. Okay. And so if you could tell us um, your experience prior to going to the Fulton County DA's office. Uh, so I was with uh, Union City Police Department close to 10 years. And then I went to uh, Fairburn. Um, I believe it was, I, I don't know how many years. Um, and then I went to Fulton County. Okay. So in total, you said you have over 30 years of law enforcement experience. Correct. All right. Thank you. Detective Welch, were you working with the Riverdale Police Department on September 12th of 2023? I was. And either on, on that day or sometime after, did you, were you called to investigate an incident that happened on September 12th of 2023 involving Ms. Conley? Yes, ma'am. And did you go to the scene on September 12th of 2023? Yes, ma'am. And was that 6231 Highway 85 in Riverdale, room 129, the Homestead Suites Hotel? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And that's in uh, Clayton County. Tell us, what did you observe um, when you first got to um, Homestead Suite, Homestay Suites? So that morning, I was traveling to Tifton, Georgia on another homicide when I got called in. So um, Riverdale Police Department received the call uh, around 10 a.m. or 10.30. Um, I arrived at the scene around 12. Um, so when I got to the scene, uh, the victim had already been transported to the hospital. Um, and I was informed that I had three subjects detained. Was the victim deceased um, or was the, or did the victim pass away at the hospital? He was deceased. Was deceased. Okay. And was this a result of a shooting? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, from your investigation, detective, please tell us what you learned that happened. So when I arrived, when I got to the scene, I talked to the officers. They told me they had three people detained, um, being the girlfriend, the victim's girlfriend, uh, the victim's friend, and the friend's boyfriend. So I requested that all three be transported to the Riverdale Police Department for interviewing. Um, once at the police department, I began with um, Kevin Thompson, who was the boyfriend of... Um, Ms. Conley's friend, um, Mr. Thompson told me that that morning he was sleeping, got off at 5 a.m. He went to the room. He woke up because somebody was knocking at the door um, when he noticed that Ms. Conley was in the room crying and said, he hit me and took my phone. Um, 
Thompson then said that he went outside to see what was happening when she when he saw uh, Mr. Stanley underground deceased. So I ended the interview with him. I asked him to do a written statement, and he did. Okay. Um, I then went to talk to Miss Sellers, uh, which is the girl. I'm sorry, yes, the girlfriend, Miss Conley's friend. Um, she told me that she woke up when her daughter. A 16-year-old daughter opened a door and said, Ma, um, let me get the, uh, Michi is what they called her. Michi is what they call Miss Conley. So the 16-year-old told uh, Miss Sellers, Michi is at the door. Sellers goes to the door, opens the door, and she sees uh, Miss Conley saying, he hit me. He took my phone. She wa He walks, I'm sorry. And then she walked into room 233 which is where Sellers and Thompson live. And that was the statement of Ms. Sellers. Correct. So I, I asked her to, to uh, write a statement, um, which she did. Okay. And then your last person you spoke to, was that the defendant, Ms. Conley? Yes, ma'am. And what did Ms. Conley tell you that happened? Ms. Conley began telling me that um, she has been in a relationship with uh, Mr. Stanley for two years. Um, that morning, uh, she said that she was sleeping on the couch because she was in her cycle. Um, and if, if, if I can explain, the room is extended stay. So it's just like a hotel room. Um, okay. So there's a couch, there's a bed and the bathroom. Um, she said she went to sleep on the couch because she can use the heater, which, you know, helps her with the pain. Um, she said that um, Stanley woke up and he was angry with her because she was sleeping on the couch and not in the bed with him. Um, they began to argue. Um, she said that she then grabbed her cell phone and her gun and to leave the room. Um, Mr. According to Ms. Conley, um, Stanley followed her and grabbed a gun from her. Um, and they struggled a little bit. Um, Ms. Conley then said that she went to the leasing office because she doesn't have her phone at this point. She goes to the leasing office to ask the uh, gentleman at the office to call the police. Um, he says, according to her, that he told her, if I call you the police, you, you guys are gonna get kicked out. Um, and she was concerned. Um, she steps out of the office and looks to her building, towards her building, and she sees Stanley walking towards the office. She goes back into the office and says, please call the police. Um, again, he says, no, I'm going to kick you all out. Sta uh, Ms. Ms. Conley then leaves the office and begins to walk on this side of building A when she sees three people standing outside their room, one being a friend of hers. She stops to ask her to call the police when uh, Mr. Stanley pushes her and tells the female not to call the police. Ms. Colley turns around and asks, why would you do that? And says that Stanley slapped her or punched her in the left side of her face. Um, at that point, she turns around and then she begins to walk to her towards her, um, towards her room. And there, there's another fight. She says, I'm ready to go. I don't want to be in this relationship anymore and begins to pack her items. She's in the bathroom at this point, grabbing her items, putting the items in her bag. When Stanley goes into the bathroom and says, no, you can't take this and you can't take that and pushed her towards the bedroom door. Um, Connie says she was on the floor. Um, and the gun was on the couch next to her. So according to her, the door's behind her, the couch is on the side, and the gun is on there. Um, at which point she says that she was scared and she, she was threatened and she shot Mr. Stanley while he was in the bathroom. Detective, just so we're clear, at this point, based on what Ms. Conley said, she was not in the bathroom, is that right? Correct. She was by the sofa, kind of in the living area of the room? Yes, ma'am. Mr. 
Stanley was in the bathroom. Yes. She shot him while she was in the living area and, and Mr. Stanley was in the bathroom. Correct. What part of Mr. Stanley's body was shot? He was shot. I'm sorry. I said, if you can recall. Yes, ma'am. So I received a call from the doctor, uh, GBI, who told me that he was shot, uh, I believe, seven times, uh, both arms and two on the back. The one that he was shot in the back came through the heart. Were any of the witnesses that you spoke to, were any of them, um, did any of them see the actual shooting? No, ma'am. Were you able to, to confirm any of Ms. Conley's statement with any of the witnesses? No, ma'am, I, I did not. Um, I later received, um, so after the, uh, so let me explain. So this home stay in, as soon as the police gets there, everybody leaves. And whoever I approach, they just turn their face and, you know, refuse to talk. Um, a few days later, uh, the family of Mr. Stanley came up and they were talking to the people there, you know, whoever was around. They essentially went to the leasing office and talked to the person there. This person there says, um, shows her a video, the video of in the parking lot. In the video, it shows Miss Conley walking towards her friend, as she said. You see her talking to the friend. You see Stanley push her towards the friend. Um, she turns, Miss Conley turns around to talk to Stanley and he hits her, as she says. Um, then you see Miss Conley strike him. And then they walk off from the side of the building into the parking lot. The only person that I see is her, Miss Conley, striking Stanley as they walked over to building B. Were you able to collect the firearm that was used for Ms. Conley? Yes, ma'am. This was, uh, was this in, within the city limits of Riverdale? Yes, ma'am. Did Ms. Conley have to be transported um, to the hospital for any injuries? No, ma'am. Thank you. I have no further questions. All Thank right. You. Mr. Richardson? Detective, can you hear me, Judge? I'm sorry. Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, I'm sorry. Detective, good morning. How are you? Are you Great. Yes, how are you? I'm fine. Good morning. Um, so you um, were on your way to Tipton and got a call that says we have a homicide here, correct? Or correct. A death. And you yes. arrived by your testimony approximately noon at that location? Correct. And when you arrived there, um, Mr. Roderick Stanley was already, had already been moved, taken to Southern Regional Hospital? Correct. And so you never had a chance to interview him because he was, uh, according to deceased at the time? Yes. And you um, canvassed the area, and you said when you looked at people or tried to approach them, everybody kind of looked away and no one wanted to get involved? Correct. You did, however, speak to Mrs. Sellers, Robin Sellers? Correct. And her um, significant other boyfriend? Yes. And that's when they informed you that... Um, Mrs. Conley had come to that location, which is, is it just above um, the room where the deceased was found? So 129 is downstairs, and then 233 is like two doors over, but the second floor. Second floor. Okay. And when you arrived there, you um, you encountered Miss Conley, or was she already in a police officer's backseat? She was already in the back of a car. She was secured? Yes. 
Right. She didn't attempt to flee the location, correct? Correct. She did not. And in fact, she left the firearm in room 233? Correct. Okay. The officer secured it? Yes. Okay. And um, Mrs. Sellers, um, though not an eyewitness, did give you a statement with regard to the state of their relationship? Correct. And she said that it had been a violent relationship? I don't recall that. I would have to look at my notes, if I may. Yes, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't have that on, I don't see that anywhere. Okay. Um, she um, told her she had a nickname, is it Michi? They gave her, that they gave Miss. I say her, gave Miss Africa Conley. That was her nickname, Michi? So the, all I know is that she was called Michi. I don't know who gave her the nickname, but yes, okay. Michi. Michi, okay. And then at some point you had an opportunity to speak with um, Mrs. Conley. Ms. Conley? Yes. And she indicated that she was on her that time of the month for her, correct? On her cycle? Her cycle, yes. And that she slept near, uh, on the sofa near the heater because it helped her back or her pain, correct? Correct. And that when Mr. S S Roderick, Mr. Stanley? Correct. Awoken, he was upset because she was not sleeping next to him, correct? Correct. Did she indicate, and I say she, Mrs. Conley, that he was controlling? Controlling? In terms of her, that he was um, kind of dominating and, and insisted that she be with him at all times? Or jealous? Yes. yes. And so when he woke up, he was immediately upset, correct? Correct. And irritated. I'm sorry. What? Irritated is the word that she, she said. You. Okay. And so she grabbed her phone, and I think it was a 380 pistol, correct? Correct. And she left the location. Correct. I was trying to. And she went to the front desk. Do you remember if the gentleman's name was Brito or um, something like that? Who was the manager? I, I don't recall his name. Okay. But in any event, she asked him what he called the police, correct? Correct. And with that, he said, if I call the police, then you, you're both going to get put out. You're going to get. Um, yes. Mm hmm. I say ejected, but put out of the room, correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and um, she asked him more than one time? Yes. Were you able to affirm that with him or confirm that with him? I have not. No, I'm not. Okay. Well, in any event, later on, you see her walking um, toward a friend, correct? Correct. And is a female young uh, young lady or woman? So it was a female and I believe two other males. Okay. And with that, um, Mr. Roderick Stanley, he's dressed in shorts. Is that correct? Yes. With no shirt on? I believe he didn't have a shirt on. Okay. And he walks up behind, according to your testimony, Ms. Conley and pushes her into the other, other woman or to the group of people? Yes. Was a pretty forceful push? Yes. Okay. And when she turned around, he slapped her or punched her in the face, correct? Yes. Which wasn't inconsistent with the statement she gave you, correct? Correct. And then I think you, okay. later on you say that you saw her fighting, fighting him back or hit him back? So after he strikes her in the face, she turns around, she strikes him in the face. And okay. that's where they begin to where she begins to strike him as they walk off. Okay. At this time, she doesn't have possession of her firearm because he had taken her phone and firearm, correct? Correct. That's why she wasn't able to call 911 and get you guys over there before this escalated. Correct. Right. And she asked someone else, uh, one of the three people out there, also to call the police, correct? Correct. And uh, Mr. Stanley, the deceased, insisted that they not call, correct? Can you repeat that again, please? And Mr. Stanley insisted that they not call, correct? To the friend, yes. Right. So is it fair to say, uh, during your investigation, no one ever calls um, 911 or Riverdale prior to the shooting, correct? Correct. 
to that specific location that Mrs. Um, Freeman put on the record. The, the six to the state. Correct. All right. And um, then according to um, the testimony is they went in back into the room. Correct. Correct. And Mrs. Conley intent, at least according to her, is to collect her belongings and leave. Correct. And did she tell you that he prevented her um, from leaving initially? And she said to me, you're going to gonna kidnap me? You're going to hold me here? You remember her saying that? Yes. Are you going to hold me hostage? Hostage, right. And then at some point, he pushed her to the ground, correct? Correct. Did she tell you that he straddled her and actually had the gun pointed at her at one point on the bed? Mm, I don't recall that, no. Okay. Um, but he threw it to the ground, correct? Correct. And um, how tall is Mr. Um, Stanley? Let me look at the, um, I don't know if I have that. Do you have a copy of the death investigator's report? Do I have a copy of it? No, sir. Okay. Um, I have his driver's license. Let me uh, zoom okay. in and see. Six one. Six one. And do you know about how tall she is? I say she, Mrs. Conley. Miss Conley, I don't know, maybe five, nine, five, ten. How tall are you? Hold on a second, I have it right here. Okay. I'm Ms. sorry, Conley's I'm five, three. I'm, my apologies. Okay. 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 So she's substantially taller than her, about eight inches taller. I mean, Gail, can you say on mute, please? Pardon me? I'm sorry, can you hear you, Ms. Freeman? Yeah, I can hear you. You're fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so um, he pushed her onto the floor. Did she indicate that, you, that he had thrown her over a bed onto a sofa or onto the um, sofa inside the room? Yes. Okay. And did she indicate that she was afraid of him at that time? Yes. And she was afraid for her well-being? Yes. Okay, and then he wouldn't let her leave initially? Initially, yes. Okay. And then at some point, she she didn't have possession of the firearm because he had taken it from her. She um, saw it on the desk or table? The couch. The couch, okay. And um, she wanted to collect her belongings, and he told her, no, you can't take this, you can't take that, et cetera, correct? And that was prior to him pushing her or throwing her. Okay, onto the floor? Yes. Okay, and um, she said at some point she gained possession of the firearm? Yes. And did she indicate at that point she was still afraid for her well-being or her life? Yes. And that she fired the gun? Yes. Okay. Um, and I might have said this before. Um, when she left the location, she left the room location, but never the property, correct? Correct. She didn't attempt to flee, correct? Correct. And you read her, her Miranda rights? I did. And without um, counsel, she agreed to give you the statement, correct? If I may, um, I gave her the Miranda rights sheet um, for her to read. Okay. And um, she did she sign off on it? She did. Okay. And you said you've been a, um, a detective or officer for more than about 32 years? Yes. Okay. In your professional opinion, did she appear to be sincere when she was expressing her fear? Yes. Okay. That's all I have to add. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Freeman, any follow-ups? Um, no, you're under the state rest. All right. Mr. Richardson, are you uh, presenting any witnesses? I am not, Judge. I'm just argument. All right. Uh, Ms. Freeman, you have a closing? Um, the state waves opening. All right. Mr. Richardson? Judge, and I appreciate your patient indulgence of me kind of repeating. Just wanted to make sure that I got some things clear. Um, murder obviously recall, it requires malice of forethought, Judge. And I know um, on TV, you know, we have to, the person lies in wait and they hide in an in a alley and all that stuff, like it's premeditated. And we know that 
um, malice could be formed in an instant. But Judge, I think the facts here don't lead to a malice murder. Um, in trial is probably a good defense of self-defense, but I think what you have here, Judge, is probably a voluntary manslaughter case. Um, we have um, a learned um, um, professional detective who's worked not only as a law enforcement for um, different uh, municipalities and states, but worked as an investigator for district attorney's office. So um, I think she comes with a lot of credence and a lot of credibility. And I think my last question to her was, um, did she seem sincere? Um, she wasn't a one-year detective. She said, yes. So what we have here, Judge, is a woman who has been in the front of um, witnesses who are obviously reluctant to come before the court. Um, the person who walks up behind her, pushes her pretty hard, and then punches her in the face at least one time, we know. And then as response, she tries to fight him back. We know that he took her phone as well as her firearm, which uh, forced her to look to the office management as well as um, other, I don't know if they're citizens, at least three other people asking, would you please call police? and that the deceased um, interfered with that and didn't allow the police to be called. Um, ultimately, we don't know from the conversation, but she ends up back in the room. And according to her statement that she gave to the officer is that he held her against her will at that point. Um, he threw her onto the floor over a sofa or something. And um, at this point, she still doesn't have a firearm but she, and I don't want to be melodramatic, but she's been brutalized by this person. And I um, submit to the court is that this is not a first um, time situation for her. At that point, she was desperate and afraid and thought she was going to be held and probably beaten further and um, defended herself. Now, she did leave the location, which I submit to the court was, was wise. But she didn't flee the location. She went to a friend upstairs, um, feet from where you know, the incident occurred, and um, had them call 911. The uniform officers arrived. Ultimately, the detective arrived, and she was placed under arrest and gave her um, statement to the officer. Judge, I don't think that it is malice of forethought. I do think it is um, worst case scenario. I think your microphone's on mute. Uh just i'm sorry Judge. There you go. oh it's okay well. i'm stuck on my cell phone because i couldn't get this computer to work <laughs> gotcha. oh, um so where, where did, it, did the course last hear what i said uh you said the last thing you said i don't think there's malice forethought i don't think there's malice of forethought judge mm -hmm. i think a worst case scenario um when a case go to a grand jury the state will probably get it indicted for voluntary manslaughter and i think that is the appropriate and wise choice in this case. We don't have, as I watched in the early other case with someone with drugs and they're stabbing each other and the shadows of this. We have a young lady who's um, been punched, been brutalized, took in the room, held against her will, kidnapped for all intents and purposes, and certainly falsely imprisoned, who defends herself and then leaves the location, but doesn't flee the location. She leaves the immediate location, goes upstairs and waits for the officer and submits to the authority of this court and to the law. So I asked the court to bound this case over um, as a voluntary manslaughter and the detective charged her with close to a highway was inside, but certainly um, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony because she's not a convicted felon. Um, that's all I have, Judge. Okay. All right, Ms. Freeman. Thank you, Judge. We're asking that the charge of malice murder be bound over to the Superior Court. Um, as Attorney Richardson said, malice can be formed at any instant. Um, and at this time, when uh, Ms. Conley was in the living area, separate from the decedent who was in the bathroom, she proceeded to shoot at least seven times. Um, several of those with Mr. Um, Stanley being shot in the back. Um, Ms. Conley, voluntarily went back to the room with Mr. Stanley. Um, she didn't have to do that. 
but she did. Um, and at the moment where she shot Mr. Stanley, um, he was not on her. He was not in her face. He did not have the weapon. He was at a point where she could have left, but she did not. And so, Judge, certainly Mr. Richardson's arguments may be uh, appropriate. The case goes to trial, but for probable cause, I believe that based on the testimony of Detective Welch, that there is enough to buy the malice murder over to Superior Court. And that's all I have. Okay. Um, give me just one moment. I want to review the uh, statute on something real quick. Okay. Um, and one correction, right. and it seems that um, Attorney Richardson and myself talked about malice murder, but it seems that the warrant of the WA it's, was for felony murder, not malice murder. Yeah. It's yeah. It is down the record. Okay. Yeah. Thank it you. is for it is for felony murder. Right. Um, is the discharge of a firearm near a highway a felony? No, that's a misdemeanor. Misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. So we don't have an underlying felony for felony murder. The WA does not have to state that. Um, but right now it is charged as a felony murder. Uh, give me just another moment here. Okay. Uh, based on the evidence presented, I am finding probable cause to bind over on the uh, murder charge. Uh, I, I am not finding probable cause on the discharge of the firearm. Uh, I do not recall evidence being presented about um, uh, how many yards from a, a public highway uh, that discharge would have occurred. Um, so I am going to dismiss that charge. Judge, one correction: the WA was for discharging a firearm in city limits. I'm I'm looking at and the so, statute sixteen eleven one zero three. It specifically says discharge of a firearm on or within fifty yards of a public highway. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing another. I I realize that's how it's captioned here. That's what I wanted to look at. It's captioned as discharging firearms in the city limits. On mm -hmm. the bond on the bond order it comes up as firearms discharged near a highway. Okay. And uh, I just looking at the code section, I'm seeing that defined as within 50 yards of a public highway. Um I'm not seeing any other kind of Okay, I understood Judge. That's, that's so, fine. Yeah. So I'm going to dismiss that charge. I am going to bind over the uh, murder charge and I will get that order uh put together today. Thank you, Judge. And may Detective Welch be excused. Yes, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Detective. Thank you. Thank you. So, so just from a housekeeping perspective, Ms. Freeman, it is listed on the calendar as having a bond hearing for the 13th. I did file a motion for bond on the 26th of September. Am I not going to have that hearing on the 13th? That is correct. Um, so, Attorney Richardson, what I stated before we started the hearing, I don't know why it appears on the magistrate court calendar that, that is an error because it is a murder. That motion for bond has to be filed in Superior Court. And you would need to file that with the um, whomever the presiding judge is for the month of October and contact that courtroom and ask that it be placed on the calendar. Okay. And last thing, how do I get a copy of this transcript? What is recording? Um, Ms. Coleman is on. And you can um, certainly um, send Ms. Coleman a message in the chat or get her email about getting a copy of it. Okay. All righty. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.